Hi there, I'm going to show you how Node Canvas works. Hmm, where do you get started with Node Canvas? Pick any game object that you like and add a component to it. Go to the Node Canvas section and you'll see there's a couple of scripts here. You can use the FSM owner for a finite state machine. You can use the dialog controller to edit dialogs and you can use the behavior tree owner to create a behavior tree. You also have to click on create new to create the actual graph. This will ask you whether to use a bound or an asset graph. Bound graphs are saved in the scene, which is quite convenient. You can use all the scene references, but you cannot use bound graphs in multiple instances. For that, you have to use the asset graph. And also for teams using source control, it's recommended to always use asset graphs. Let's try bound here. Then this canvas window opens and you can drag this down here and dock it anywhere. Right click on the empty space and you get a pop-up. From here, you can select the kind of node that you wish to add. Let's try the sequencer. We are in the behavior tree. The sequencer just execute its child nodes one after another. So let's create another node called an action node and then connect these two by left clicking on the port and dragging it down to the other node. You definitely want more than one node. Hit Ctrl D to duplicate just as in Unity in general. It's all there. You can also right click a node to get a context menu. To do something with this graph, let's select the first node and assign an action task. We can use something very simple like the camera fade in. So it's a fade in time of one. When that's finished, it will change to the other node. Likewise, we'll just use the fade out here. This will simply fade in and fade out constantly. So that's a very basic graph. Let's try this out. You'll see it blends to black and back in. And in case you're wondering what this head is doing, it's something I set up earlier. That's the Node Canvas Safety Instructions head. This is a bit more complex graph. It's still using a sequencer. In this case, it uses a move towards action that has the head move towards some game object. In this case, the 5G bucket right here at a speed of two and a stop distance of one. So when it comes within distance of one, it will stop doing the move towards and it will advance to the next node in the sequence. This will add a force and lift the head upwards. Then the next node becomes active. This one will move the head to another safety head, this particular one. So it goes back to the left. And when it's within distance of that head, it will get another force added to it. And let's try the head going back and forth and jumping up and down. You can see while it's executing, it shows you which states are active, which are being checked. The yellow ones mean this is currently executing. The green ones mean they return success. I can already hear your questions. What if I want to use variables? That's quite easy. You have this blackboard on all graphs. In the blackboard, you can create all kinds of variables. This variable here is special. It has a data binding to the transform position. This means that the value in the block board will always be in sync with the transforms position. If I were to change this vector, I would actually change the position of the object from within the graph. This is quite convenient. So you can basically script any variable in any component or get any component's value in the graph. You'll always get two types of lists for variables. You have the graph blackboard variables, which are local variables to the graph. They are not accessible outside the graph. And the actual game objects variables can be accessed from other graphs. Those are your public variables. You can create a global scene blackboard in the scene. The global blackboard allows you to create variables that have a lifetime of the entire app. To use an actual variable, we want to replace the up force here to a variable. Let's create a new Unity engine vector three. This will become our app value. Let's put this to nine so we can see the change. Let's call it bounce up. And then you can select the action. Click on the circle and select the bounce up variable. And we can use that for this one here as well. Use the bounce up value and let's try this. It will basically not come into screen anymore. <laughs> yeah, so it's bouncing real nice. A very common question with Node Canvas is, where's the action for this or that? Node Canvas is quite flexible. Let's create a action task right here so we can add an action. You might be wondering, hey, physics, 
there isn't much going on here, right? But you can always use the reflected execute function. We're using the game object that the graph is on. So we can select a method. Then we can select any component right here. For instance, the rigid body. How about we add a relative torque to it? Then we can make it spin. One, two, three. And we'll just connect this in between those two. You can also move around the graph using the middle button and dragging. And for the notebook users, you can also hold Alt and then left click and drag. You can also use this preview minimap here. This is quite convenient for larger graphs. Let's try this. Boing, 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 boing. And if you don't like what's going on at runtime, you can just delete this node. It will update the graph. You can make changes to your flow at runtime without having to recompile. Just in case the execute functionality doesn't suffice, you want your custom code in there. There's the tools menu. Go to Paradox Notion, Node Canvas, Create Menu. And here you can create a new task. You get this wizard that allows you to create a new action or condition, give it a name, my action, click on create, you will get a new script. And normally you only need to add code for the execute method. Don't forget there's a tools, paradox, motion, node canvas menu, and there's a couple of things that you can do here. You can create all the state machine, dialog tree, and behavior tree assets. In the root menu, you have the preferred types editor. If you have custom types that you want to use with the graph, you can open that and edit the list of types. You may also want to, for instance, remove some types that you don't want to use. There's the graph console that helps you in debugging graphs. There's the graph explorer. This is a tree view of the node graph. You can use the graph refactor window. The external inspector panel is particularly interesting because you get a dockable inspector window for the nodes and actions. Select a node and you have this dockable window here. If you close that window, the inline pop-up window will open once again. You can also use this button right here to switch over to the dockable inspector. So I think this about covers the basics of Node Canvas. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, go to the Node Canvas forum, post it there. There's also a Discord channel. And if you like my videos, subscribe to my channel, have fun and create something awesome. That would be my best advice. See you next time.